this is the time of year when a lot of us are out in our gardens, out in the landscapes, and we're looking around, and all of a sudden your eye catches on a plant that just doesn't look quite right. Well, you know, it's summer, you know, lots of things are going on, anything is possible. And so that's one thing we, we thought about talking about today was what's wrong with my plant and maybe talk about how you would go and start to diagnose the problem. So any of us in extension will tell you, we sort of play 20 questions. And so we start with the basic questions of, you know, what is the plant and what's going on with the plant and, and, and so on and so forth. So that's what I was going to talk about today is just some basics on how to get started on that. So one thing that we really talk about is what is normal for the plant. You know, a lot of times we get calls about, oh, this plant, it's the leaves aren't looking right or the plants is starting to have spots or the tree isn't growing or, you know, there's just lots of different calls that we have coming in. And, and so I just looked up these quick pictures just for further explanation of where we have to take a step back when, we're, when a plant has a problem and we have to start thinking, okay, what does a normal plant, relatively same age, same size, what should it look like? You know, should it be dark green? Should it be light green? Should there be big leaves, little leaves? You know, should the, um, you know, what is normal versus what is not normal? On the left-hand side, we have roses. Um, that's the furthest right picture. And, and, you know, that one, all the leaves are very, very small, growing in a weird fashion, lots of thorns. There's what we call witch grooming going on, where there's multiple shoots coming out of one growing point. The top middle picture right, is a watermelon vine. And so it's starting to turn colors, you know, not the normal dark green that you would be noticing. The bottom left-hand picture, it is starting to show spots. Versus on the right-hand side, you know, we have a plant on the top that has gnarled leaves, gnarled branches. And, you know, if you're not familiar with that plant, you would think that it, you, would, you would think that it was sick. And actually, that is what we call a contorted filbert or Harry Lauder's walking stick. And it is a very common landscape plant that is planted just for those features, something unique, eye-catching in the landscape. On the bottom, we have the moon and stars watermelon. The spots and the blotching on the fruit and the leaves would cause you to go, whoa, what is going on? Is there something wrong with my watermelon? But if you just take a look at what the typical for that plant is, you find out that is very normal. So that's one thing we start looking at. What is normal versus what is not normal? Next question we ask a lot of times, people have a hard time answering. When did this problem first appear? And so, you know, we have to start uh, talking about, okay, has it been there for a while? Has it just been a couple of days? Has it been a couple of weeks? And you'd be surprised at how many of us don't regularly walk around the house or don't, you know, uh, to look at our landscape or we don't regularly go out into the garden. So that problem could be existing for days, weeks, even months, and we might not even notice. And that's why we encourage people to get out in the gardens and scout, what we call scout. Scouting means you're just going to go look. You're going to walk through those roads. You're going to walk along that edge of the landscape bed. You're going to go walk out to your trees and take a look at them. You're going to scout your landscape, and that way you're going to be noticing if there's anything that doesn't look quite right. And so over to the right, I went and got this picture because I like the idea that a lot of times we have spotting going on in our landscape at all times. And so a lot of times we don't notice it. And so it'll start out as small spots and then it starts, you know, the spots start growing and growing. And then next thing you know, the tissue falls out. And then a lot of times we get questions of what insect is feeding on my plant. Well, it's not really insect damage, it's disease damage but the tissue falls through once that tissue is damaged enough, becomes dry, brittle, and crumbles away. And so I like these pictures as, as a demonstration because a lot of times we will overlook some of this until the spots really start um, having an effect on leaves and we start noticing, oh, wow, what is really going on? So some of the symptoms I urge you to start looking at would be spots, look for any discoloration, look for any stunting. 
You know, I have a tree in my yard that has not grown hardly one inch in 15 years. I do know what the problem is, by the way. And I have not taken it upon myself to correct it, but I should. But I always use it as an example in most of my classes is, is you know, if you have a nutrient imbalance or you have a pH problem, you're going to have problems. Look for those twisting, that curling, any of the bumps. I know we talked already about galls. You know, look for any abnormal growths on, growths on the trees, browning patterns, any depth. You know, a lot of times we don't notice a plant is gone until it's been missing and there's an empty spot too. I've been known to do that. So, you know, just get out there, scout, you know, make sure what's going on in the garden and start recognizing if you have problems and what could be going on as far as things missing, spots, discoloration, so on and so forth. Realize that most plants have specific problems. And so this can also help narrow down what could be going on in your landscape. So roses, for example, we always, we know that for the most part, roses are going to get black spot. They're going to get powdery mildew. Worst case scenario, they're going to have some virus such as rose rosette virus. And then in that case, you're going to pull your plants. But with the case of black spot and powdery mildew, they are treatable. And so just realize that every plant has a host of problems. Monarda or bee balm has, gets powdery mildew. We'll, do, we'll get it every year. Tomatoes will always get early blight or aphids or, you know, any number of problems, sectoria leaf blight, um, cat facing. And that's one thing I really like about some of these. Uh, what's wrong with my plant is you can actually look up the plant and they'll say, okay, here are the common problems. And you can start, you know, going through those problems and process of elimination. A lot of times you can come with an answer close to what's going on. And so just keep that in mind. Problems are usually plant specific. We also have to take, take in consideration environmental conditions. Uh, one is we I always really like to preach. This is sort of my soapbox part where I talk about every plant has a favorite environment. And so if we uh, vary off of that favorite environment, we could be running into problems. And in things like planting a shady plant in a full sun situation or planting a full sun plant in a shady environment those will start causing a lot of problems. Think about also the soil conditions. You know, if, we, if our pH is wrong and we have a nutrient imbalance, you know, those can really throw a plant off. Weather conditions. Oh, think about this year's weather already. Um, I think in the last 15, 20 years, when I think about the perfect gardening season, I don't know that I can pinpoint one. We always have something go a little hairy whether it's too much rain early in the season, a drought later in the season, you know, there, there's just, you know, tornadoes, high winds, there's just lots of weather conditions that can play havoc on our plants. And so we have to step back when we're doing our scouting and think, okay, all right, that's right. I had that 15 inches of rain. So those things that don't like wet feet, they're the ones that are going to be showing the problems. So we have to start trying to match what the weather conditions and soil conditions and, and environmental conditions back to the problems that we are seeing. And then I can't forget insect and animal damage. Lots of pests in the garden this time of year. You know, squash bugs, uh, stink bugs, potato beetles. I mean, there's just lots of different insects out there, aphids. And so um, you just got to keep an eye out for those things too. I know um, my dog happened to be in the garden with us last night, and every time I turned around, she was knocking bean plants over. Well, I couldn't figure out why we kept having vines wilting on our cucumbers, and the peppers were losing branches, and the beans were losing branches, and we were just losing lots of produce that way. And come to find out, it was my dog running through the garden. And so we just have to keep those things in mind, uh, once again, as we are scouting. The other thing that we have to question is what have we done in that garden? What have we done around that plant? And so it starts all the way back to plant selection. Okay, have we chosen the appropriate variety, cultivar, so on and so forth? Have we put it in the right spot? Have we spaced it? You know, we are bad. As gardeners, we are bad about crowding. So we take a small plant and we want to put multiples in a small space without really recognizing that that plant might get three to five feet tall and wide. 
And so just keep that in mind. Spacing can have something to do with it. Uh, our watering practices, fertility practices, pesticide application. I know that uh, a lot of weed feeds are being used. We're spraying for, you know, the glyphosate or the 2,4-D to get rid of uh, weeds. That can really um, have an impact on tomatoes, roses, grapes, you name it. I mean, we, we do have plants that are very sensitive to any herbicides that are planted. But you can also do the same amount of damage with insecticides because it is sprayed at peak sun during the day. And if you're using certain formulations, you can get a lot of burning on tissue, plant tissue. So just keep that in mind. Pruning practices can also play you know, a big part. You do prune too much, not enough. And just keep that in mind. Choosing disease resistance. You know, I know that um, we've already talked about Menarda or bee balm, having powdery mildew. You can actually choose varieties that are resistant for that disease. So disease resistant should be looked at very, very much when you're thinking about what new plants to put in the ground. Think about mulching practices. You know, don't go with the uh, volcano mulching. Don't try to always think donut or you know, pull that mulch away from that stem because mulching can also cause a problem. And not mulching enough can also cause a problem because you know, down here in the Southeast region, we've been really dry. And in those areas that have not had any mulch, those are the areas that we've seen a lot of plants wilting, soil drying out too much, heat stress. So just keep those things in mind. Mulching is a plus, but just be careful how you're mulching and when you're mulching. And also, once again, are you scouting? Are you scouting frequently enough? I'm out in that garden every day. If not every day, I try to make it every day, uh, every other day. And, and that way I can catch problems as they are coming up. Surround yourself with resources. Once again, remember that a lot of these problems are plant specific, which means you know, these resources can be really great. Your local extension specialist can help you. Our university extension website, we have lots of guides out there. We talked about roses already. You have one on planting and we have one on care after planting. Those can be really handy when it comes to beginning roses, uh, you know, putting roses for the first time in your garden. There's lots of books out there and lots of websites out there on referencing and problem solving. Just always remember if you're doing a lot of looking on the websites, always try to use extension websites, use government websites, university websites. So anything ending in edu or .gov. Um, I, if I do a search, I usually put the word extension or university behind my key terms. That way I'm popping up uh, reliable research-based information. There are a lot of opinionated people out there. And so if you just do random searches, you can get all sorts of opinions, but which one is correct. So always try to follow university extension or uh, government websites. Uh, we have a wonderful soil testing lab. So if you think you have a nutrient imbalance or a pH problem, definitely get a soil test in. There's information on, on the soil testing lab on the MU website, or you can uh, contact your local extension office and talk to them about how to send off a sample. We also have a wonderful plant diagnostic lab. We have a, a website that you can go to and find out how to send in samples. He is also taking pictures or you can go through your local extension office and we can get you that help and get you the information about the plant diagnostic plan. Just some last thoughts. I always try to tell people more is not better. Less can be better. So when you're thinking about, I know we just had um, a couple of people call in in the last couple of weeks that they're spraying, spraying, spraying. And the spraying has actually got them in a little bit of trouble in terms of their plants don't look good, uh, leaves are spotted, they're and they just don't look really good. So I would encourage you, don't overdo things and, and always try to figure out what the problem is before you start treating. Some issues are purely cosmetic in nature. Some things don't need a treatment. And so that's why I always try to say, find out what the problem is before you jump to spraying or doing anything to that plant. That way you know, well, is it worth really trying to take care of that problem when it may not be a problem at all? Uh, some issues are temporary. I know there are some aphids out there that are just temporary problems, and they will go away. Uh, a lot of those are, are on trees, but um, just keep in mind, um, once again, it goes back to figuring out what the problem is, but some of those issues are temporary. 
Some plants will always have issues. You can count on it, regardless of how you treat it, what variety you plant, and how much you're spraying. Roses will most likely always have some type of problem. Tomato will always have some type of trouble. So just keep in mind that some plants will always have issues no matter what you try. And just to take that a step further, some plants die no matter what you do. I know that we get a lot of calls about my tree is not doing well. It's just, it's just the leaves are falling off or they're turning brown and, and the plant is failing to thrive. Well, fact is, once a tree starts that downhill spiral, it just, it's hard to pull them back out. And you probably will lose it. And also lastly, consider the value of that to plant when considering treatment, because you know sometimes it's just not worth that struggle and the plant is too easy to replace to really go through all those troubles. Uh, just a, one last pitch. We do a garden spade newsletter every month. And there's about 10 of us that write for this. And in this last issue, I did cover what's wrong with the plant. It's sort of a systematic approach of asking different questions. And I encourage you to go look at that this summer. And so if you have problems, you might start asking yourself those questions. Okay, what's going on? What's normal versus what's not normal? What's exactly, what am I seeing? Um, and so on and so forth. 